Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mokalover and thank you for joining me back here on TNO, the mod that had a bit of controversy in the past, or maybe in the future, but anyway, slow news day. The Big Daddy stood surrounded by a wall of journalists and media personalities, most of which were working for state media. Cameras flashed as Mr. Herman his, and his charismatic words were scribbled onto notepads for tomorrow's morning newspapers. His words would be published to the front pages as per usual, but there was little news to be had in them. Another industrial plant ravaged by the Civil War brought back to function, another win for the military production sheets, another uneventful day for the front page. As the Big Daddy continued to captivate the media crowd, a sleek black car pulled up alongside his vacant motorcade, which sat parked behind the gaggle of reporters and cameras. Swiftly, three uniformed officers exited the car, scarcely waiting for the vehicle to come to a rest. With a visible sense of urgency, they walked towards the Big Daddy, curtly cutting their way through the gathering of media. Noticing the sudden interruption of his speech, Goring shot a cold look towards the approaching officers, yet noticing the look of urgency and worry upon the faces of the approaching men, he restrained himself from lashing out towards the sudden interruption. What warrants this interruption? The Big Daddy asked with a reserved voice, turning himself and the newly arrived officers away from the newsmen. Uh, my Big Daddy, I apologize for the curt interruption, but we have news from Africa. It's Alex Kumasahutik. Best spoken away from prying ears, replied the most senior of the three officers, seemingly short of breath. Giving the officers a nod, Goring briefly returned to the press to charismatically apologize for his early departure, before quickly walking to his motorcade and departing for the three officers, or with and with them. The reporters would have had their front page news story, especially for tomorrow. Ill tidings to be sure, we're finishing up on cranking down, cracking down all those... Evil, evil bankers. Ooh, consumer goods. Round up dissidents. Ooh, but school militarization. I would like to get more political power for now. Oh, betrayal. Um, oh, that's not good. Begin to withdraw forces. We set to reinforce the colonies from the continent. Leave them nothing. Ooh. Well, let's do this one first. Schools were a minus home before enter service. Children of the future, and Mr. Herr Adolf was wise enough to see that. The Adolf Junge was to be our youth's first taste of a martial life back in the 30s, and we need to inspire such a thirst for that na just now as much then. A, a grueling time is ahead of us, and our children need to be prepared for that. A great focus on physical education will prepare them for the wars ahead. Reichs Marshal Shona ha himself has recommended that we relax grade requirements. It would be cruel to insult the men who would go on to fight on the front line by giving them failing grades and there are much better things to educate them on. Every week, our youth will perform atomic bombing drills, just in case. Duck and cover, kids! Duck and cover. The bankers bleed. Greed is not good, and anyone who thinks they can leech off this good, strong, and bold German people shall be left with nothing, banished beyond the Vaterland's comforts and markets. The new fear has his eyes upon these rich parasites since the waning days of Hitler's reign. Now, he reigned the Vaterland in his wake. Even if they do whatever spineless things they are perf perfectly capable of doing, they won't get a chance, not when he starts pressing his black boot against their necks. And that is despite his own dream of reshaping the economy of the Reich. Without them, he shall be a master of the Reich's wealth, free to use it for his own purposes and the greater needs of the people. For now, it was important to really sink the teeth of the state into the assets and their very persons. He ordered no mercy in his pronunciations against the horde rats. He didn't Announce them for the crimes against the personal wealth of each and every German citizen, and as he has insulted them as economists and monetarists who are corrupt as the Jews, he even went so far as to accuse them of serving themselves, of being under the dirty paws of Jews, if they were not Jewish themselves. And naturally, they were swiftly dealt with in any manner available, from simply refusing to do business with them up to crafting unfortunate actions that befell them. The good Fuhrer would let these slide as long as they help him throw these rapacious financiers out of society. He would not need to apply Germany's justice against them, after all. The natural enemy of the Vatalan was not those who served the fierce interests, but those who sought to up be opportunistic, to squeeze them out like the thieves they are, or turning the booty to those who rightfully possesses it. This is how Goring and the Vatalan made new, sh made new shall prevail in the absence of these goblins. Germany can live without this league of pests. And next up, we're going to nationalize the banks because I really want the minus 10% consumer goods. Because, like I said earlier in the last video, um, two lines of military production going on all the time. GDP doesn't really matter too much. And I want at least one thing going on so we can continually improve our industry. The banks have been allowed too much leeway in their dealings. Foreigners, traders, and fools have all received their funding, and it's time we end this wastage. And uh, <clears throat> shackling them to the state will ensure their loyalty and provide a valuable source of cash to fund our plans for the Reich. We don't need to pay them, of course. Those bankers left are eager for an opportunity to prove their loyalty. And right now, I've already sent divisions, as you probably saw by the end of the last episode, to, well, Reich's Commissariat, Sud Africa. Not Sud West Africa. And his betrayal. We will go to war with them. We, he must be punished. They have up to 25 divisions. Quite a few guys there. Very good, very good. Um, yeah, they have Vemok soldiers, which is not great. But hey, we're sending like some pretty good motorized divisions. It's not bad. We've got a few tank divisions here, too, which are going to be quite good. And actually, we made them 20 combo with maintenance companies. I know it's Africa still, but still. And then we also have a 
three, yeah, three false Jimmy Mega Divisions. Our only 14 combo with. We do need more army XP, but we'll get there. Nationalize the banks and Hutig's betrayal. A devastating blow. That such a traitor was under our very noses this entire time is maddening. Hutig has killed or driven her to ground the loyal Reichs Commissals and still with any and any still within his grasp are either his allies or too scared to go against him. Out of such a brief window of glorious victory, we have once more been confronted with a sting of defeat. However, we have no time to sit on our misery. A crisis of this magnitude must be met with all the energy of the Fuhrer and the nation. We shall seek to assess and stabilize the position, and once that has been achieved, we will begin the dirty work of punishing our little rogue. I like Kumasa, which we will punch the trader once we get down there. So, um, anything else down here? Enable hard mode. I don't want to do that one yet. Um, oh, that's just probably that stuff there. War cabinet. We can always go and see who is here in the cabinet. That's good. And we have reclaim Madagascar, which we literally don't even need right now. Uh, we might disable that later. Ignore enemy aid events. Oh, we're almost down there, and we should have our planes down here too very soon. Oh, because we're running out of planes, I actually threw on some interceptors here, too, which is kind of rare for me to do, but whatever. It is what it is. Nationalize banks. One, two, three, some. Not bad. Not bad. Who takes betrayal? Followed up with what? A bayonet for bankers? Ooh, lingering traitors. What does that look like? Uh, martial law. Germany in ruins. Ooh, that's pretty bad. That is actually really bad. Ooh, we get more stability. Ooh, that'd be nice. Late night reading. Round of dissidents. I'd like to do that, but I want to see a fighting withdrawal. Uh, begin to withdraw the forces we sent to reinforce our colonies from the continent. Who take may claim the continent, but lo men, loyal men of the Wehrmacht, both from our colonial garrisons and our own advisory forces, are still active in the region. We will make the traitor pay and retrieve our men at the same time through a fighting withdrawal. No doubt the usurper of Africa has already planned to have his own loyalists round up those who still fight for the Vaterland. Our soldiers will be ready for them. Once initial attempts have been swatted down, we will coordinate the desperate groups to converge in ports where they can hijack transportation. At the same time, any airstrip still under our own control will be used to cover the retreat and bomb any advancing columns for as long as it can be arranged. This will not be an easy fire, but we will have our victory all the same. Followed up with, leave him nothing. If that Don Trader Hutik believes he will have any access to the resources we have deployed to the continent to aid the rightful Reichs Commissars, then he is further gone than we initially believed, of course. He will get none of it. We will make absolutely certain weapons, ammo, logistical supplies, even pencils and paper for reporting will all be either carried off from on the earliest plane or, should that option be lost, blown up for all we care. The Abwehr, of course, are always doing its due diligence and Galen is admitted to the Fuhrer that, as a precaution, much of the shipments we sent over were secretly wired with remote explosives. The Fuhrer is willing to overlook Galen's lack of transparency on this matter and the recognition of his presence, prescience thinking. Oh, oh wow, that's really bad. They can lose stability and political power? Nice, but the madman's betrayal. The situation room of the Fuhrer bunker was a buzz of staff officers discussing emergency operation plans, aides carrying folders of minute details, and party cronies jockeying for attention and influence as they always did. In this frenzy of action and inaction stepped Johannes Steinhoff, who had hurried from the uh, Reichsluftfahrt to Ministerium as fast as his staff car would carry him. Moving to the center of activity, occasionally giving a hurried Heil Goring to a passing officer, Stenhoff advanced to where he knew that Fuhrer would be. He found him, his face a dark red, in a state more furious and terrible than he had observed since the close of the Civil War. He was on the phone and he was shouting, almost screaming down the line. Tell put come up. I want a cordon established around the ports by the end of the week. Nothing gets in and nothing comes out. Without our approval and knowledge, do you understand me? Without waiting for a reply, the dictator slammed the receiver down, hanging up. Stenhoff adjusted his sunglasses back to position nervously. So, I take it that the rumors are true then? Goring almost snarled at his air chief. They are ah, that effing dude who took and betrayed us. He has killed Shank and driven Mueller out of the ground. That's not what's important right now, though, Johannes. What's important is that we destroy him. We turn his ridiculous effing Reichstadt into dust and ashes. That's where you come in. I want bombers of Aquilomane today. Steinhoff said nothing, just blinked. His words, carefully chosen. The former pilot answered, My Fuhrer. If we really have lost the continent, then it is logistically impossible for us to reach any targets within Hutik's territory. Ooh, you don't want to say that. Hutik's face went purple. Oh no, Goring's face went purple. And for a moment, Steinhoff had the half-humorous, half-grotesque mental image of the man popping like a balloon. Goring did not pop, however, but after a tense moment, he did seem to almost deflate back to his chair where she had half risen. Fine, then he whispered sullenly. But Steinhoff turned to leave, he spoke up. But tell Marshal Shona to see me at once. I wish to have his advice on this matter. Of course, mein Führer. We are getting ready to go. We are going to go blitz through Han's butthole as fast and as hard as possible. Where are his divisions? Doesn't matter. We're going to go in it right now. Punish the traitor. How dare you. If you deploy gas, then we know you've been a traitor. Call him the Irish. <laughs> boys, let's go. Are you, go are you guys in? Yes, they are. We're going in, boys. Death to traitors. Oh, let these guys go in. Oh, baby boy. Go boys! This is this is all um basically preparing us for oh here comes the Irish uh, the future conquest here so ah oh, spare points oh, overwhelming strikes great 
Wow, you get one more organization. That is... That is something. I'll, <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to go actually go with air supremacy because I want our helicopters to do as well as possible. So I'm actually going to go ahead and start doing some air doctrine because we're going to really need that. Um, you literally can't stop, guys. Like, for real, you literally cannot stop. Guys. Bros. Dudes. Chimichangas. I'm oh, fighting with Raul and... Oh! Wait, wait, we can't do this one anymore. Leave him nothing. Oh, what the heck? Wait, why can we do anything here? What? Save as many loyalists as possible. Oh, we could have waited, blockaded Africa, cut our losses, undermine the traitor. Well, if that's the case, I want you to at least be able to read all these things. What the heck? Okay, it's the lost continent. Undermine the traitor. The lost... Yeah, okay. That is... Oh, I should have waited to do that one. Darn it. Oh, well. I got really excited to do that, so... Change for bankers. Let's go and do a round of dissidents. The enemies are around every corner, even if there are a few less corners after the war. The Catholic Church has never been troublesome for us. The Reich's Concordat may have officially stabilized relations with the Vatican, but... Uh, we stopped paying attention to it long ago. Catholics are everywhere in Bayern and Ostmark, and the priests are there are too often taking it upon themselves to interfere in matters that are none of our business, or their business. They learned the value of a good speech long ago, and we must make sure they're unable to give them. Borders became a lot more porous than when all the guns are pouring inwards, uh, pointing inwards. Smuggling has taken hold in the east and south, with businesses often turning to their counterparts across the border. We might be able to excuse this if it was a temporary measure, but their greedy ways have persisted after the war's conclusion. Punishment is in order. All these traitors will be confined to prison camps until the Wehrmacht decides whether it is worth it. Killing them. Followed up with a bullet for traitors. The war was long and hard fought, and many still are not willing to accept the proper state of things. Hadrius SS have been dug out, but Bormann and Speer's people remain, ready to resume their sabotage at a moment's notice. Anyone willing to serve those who would bring the right to ruin is an idiot at best and should be eliminated as a hindrance or traitor, and must be eliminated with prejudice. We should not make the mistake of letting them live. Oh, an encirclement! We love encirclements here. We live for the encirclements. Go by? Just in case, go this direction. Uh, oh, it feels like a reverse USA right now. It really does. Oh, there's another. Right there. Nice. Go, boys, go. That's going to be a lot of territory that we're going to have to keep. Um, is, I doubt there's anything else here, really, that we can do. No, not yet. Uh, casualties? How are we looking? They have up to 20... They don't have that many divisions. They've lost 43,000, which is pretty good. We've lost about 1,000 ourselves, so not bad, not bad. I want you guys to go there and go all the way around if you can. Like, we're going, we're going kind of wild here. Look at that lag. What happened in 1965, everybody? Okay, what the, what the? Game. Game. You were going in a certain direction, and then you said, nah? Bruh. Uh, choppers, we need you over here immediately. Yeah, how the AI thinks about traveling, I do not understand. This really does not make any sense. Good. Oh, we overran him. Good job, guys. Good job. As you should. Run of the dissidents. Just shoot every single one of them. Go, 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 and... Hey, we cut him off. Nice. Oh, not good enough. That's okay, guys. Just go like this. Like, literally just do that. Ah, yes. ah over around again. Alright, not bad. Go here, here to here. Keep encircling them, that's all we want to do. I don't know if planes can still... Or choppers... Choppers can... Or yeah, helis can reinforce, but... Okay, RFK inaugurated? Oh, man, that's... Ooh. We might see a, uh, Kennedy dying again in this episode. Ooh. Bullet for the traitors. But faith in the gun. We remove martial law. That's not bad. We do lose 20% stability, which I don't want to lose. But let's do change for thinkers. We may have dealt with this latest round of rebellious students, but what are their next one? What are the other one after that? It is our duty to maintain discipline in our children. We shall have the Wehrmacht God station at university campuses. Officers monitoring the lesson plans. And a few thousand Reichsmarks will buy us a disproportionate number of students' informants. What else do students have to complain about but money? A bayonet for bankers. Complacency is what we got got us here where we are now. We were complacent with the students, with the bankers, with the rest of our party no more. We will ensure grip never slackens on the banks, and keep tabs on whoever is off there. They redoubled their efforts when they never saw their traitorous colleagues again. Perhaps this atmosphere can be sustained. They're all guilty of something, and removing one every now and then will do a great deal to remind them where their place is. Guys, can you please do something here? Do I not have another chopper around here? I thought we did. I, I really thought we did. Huh. 
How's this side looking? It's looking okay. Oh my gosh, letting the AI do this is just... Oh, that's such a bad idea. There you go, now that's better. Go in here, and then go in there, and go in there. Good, just go in here. Nice. Uh, losses, we've taken 8,000 couch keys. We killed off 130,000 of them, that's pretty good. And they're two-thirds away towards capitulation, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Just keep going, guys, going. I know you got trucks. This isn't the most efficient way to do things, but whatever. You know, it is what it is. We got enough fuel, though, which is really nice, actually. Uh, only 14 billion in debt. That's all right. How are we doing with this stuff? We're looking still pretty good. Pretty good. Guys, please. Guys, please. Uh, where are the choppers? Choppers. Ah, there you are. Have you moved... Ah, late night reading. Ah, Devlinga Brigade. Hans was in his bedroom, but he made sure to look around all the same. His door was locked, his window bolted, the drapes drawn down. His room was a black box in all meaning of the word, with only his small reading lamp providing a bare minimum of illumination. Satisfied that he was safe as he could make himself, he opened his desk drawer and slowly pulled out the small book and buried it underneath the mess of papers within. All Quiet on the Western Front, it was called, by Eric Maria Remarqui. It was about the life of a soldier in the First World War, the one Grandpa had fought him. Only were all of his other favorite books about that conflict are spoken of noble it was to fight. The glory of battle was always the shame of being stabbed in the back, and this one told quite a different story. The soldiers lived horribly, filthy lives in the trenches. The rats alone were enough to make him queasy all his horrible death. Uh, it didn't sound anything like what he'd been taught in school. No wonder he wasn't supposed to be reading it. When Professor Heron had handed him the book some time ago, he made Hans promise not to tell anybody about the gift, of course. Hans had seen the title on the list of banned books before, but it wasn't until he had actually read it did he realize why he'd been forbidden to. A knock on the door made him freeze in fear. Hans, are you asleep? He turned the lamp off, hit the novel, and darted into bed. The sound of his mother's feet moving away told him he was safe. He had only gone through a few more pages tonight, but that was fine. He would finish it no matter how long it took him, but always in secret. Faith in the gun. If things are not calmed down, they have to at least stop heating up. Arms on every street corner do a great deal for one's peace of mind and have restored faith in the Fuhrer's ability to keep things under control, if not his legitimacy. The rebellious voices have been silenced for now, and if we keep a lid on things, they will start to stay that way. All we have to do is maintain faith in our soldiers, tanks, and guns. Oh, who doesn't love a good gun? Go up this way, too. Go, 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 chop rama Nice. Good. Let's go here. Nice. Good job, guys. You're doing a great job. This, well, some some places. Uh, go up there. Ah. Now you can do it, right? Oh, Dilvanga's dead. Ah, well, that's unfortunate for him. Keep going in, boys. You're doing a great job. We've only... How many, they got 10 divisions left. We've lost 16,000. Oh, we got encircled. Well, you pieces of doo-doo. You fat doo-doo heads. That's what you are, Hans Hutig. Yeah, tremble. Quick, quick in your boots. Faith in the gun, though. Followed up with Pride in the Fear. Oh, this will remove the domestic unrest influencer. Okay. Pride in Goring. More political power. Stability and war support. Increase loyalty and influence? Shiro Goring has done what seemed impossible and vanquished all pretenders to his title. That evil administrator Bowman, Speer, the architect of the Reich's destruction, Hadrish, the man with the iron heart who tortured and murdered across Europe. If Hitler's faith in him was not proof of his legitimacy, then the destruction of all of his foes certainly is. We should be proud of our hero, who has fought and com commanded across Europe since the First World War and brought victory in his wake. Yes. Actually, how are we doing here? APCs are not good. We actually have somewhat of a surplus of tanks. Actually, before we started this episode, we had about a thousand tanks in reserve, so we got to keep an eye on that. And our artillery, anti-tank, guns are okay. Motorized is not very good. We're lacking a lot of stuff here. We need more millies, which we're desperately trying to make. Don't get me wrong. We are really trying to make more, but... Oof. Go here. Dilolo. I thought that said dildo, but Dilolo. Sorry, I guess I guess my yeah, my channel's not technically safe for kids, but whatever. All right, not bad. Another few thousand dead. Oh, only a quarter million dead. That's all. Good job, guys. Wow, we are we already took Leopoldville. Wow. So how far are we? Eighty-eight percent of the way there. Where's the capital? Is it? Oh, you got. Oh God, you got already broke free. Dodoma. Um. Keep going for them VPs, boys and girls. Falshimiega. Kamina. Nice. I want you to go here and just surround him. Big surrounding. Big big love. Big love. Operation Big Love. Grossa Liebe. Ah. Oh, if we aren't loving him bigly. Are we really loving him? And we're gonna spend the loving crap out of our GDP. We're gonna we're gonna give big love. 
to our economy. But Faith McGunn, a man in his field uniform, stepped into the classroom, his eyes drawn towards the students waiting in their seats as the professor stood by his desk. The soldier didn't let this sight linger in one place, always bringing it up from the left to the right, entrances, exits, pathways, and obstacles. He stopped to look forward and walked to the front, then <clears throat> turned sharply facing the center. He let his left hand reach down, groping at an empty belt. The man bit his lower lip, remind, remembering that he was not in a place that allowed for weapons. This was a school, and the thought came across his mind, you'll get it back. The professor spoke to the students, who either seemed intimidated by this visitor or perhaps excited. A few showed no emotion, only curiosity. The man waited for his own chance to speak. Patiently, of course, but the way the man spoke with its awe, its naivety, its ignorance. His voice annoyed him. He had left, his left hand groped for the empty space by his belt once more. Nothing to hold, nothing to bring up and shoulder, just nothing to give him some measure of control or safety. Just as sweat dropped down his neck, when the older man stopped speaking and returned to his seat, a soldier, an experienced rifleman who had served as a Vatalan, saw fit for him to serve in whatever place. Then serving once more to win the Vatalan for the new Fuhrer, stiffened. Ooh. The thoughts raced through his head, as bullets once did by his ears. A nervousness rang his ruined bells inside his equally ruined mind, and the full measure of the past rose back up to the surface, tormenting him with the truths of war, as he soon seemed to not really comprehend anything at all. This war of mine, he said to himself, reminding his conscience, is not theirs to thoroughly appreciate. He wished himself to will through and speak about his experiences as they were to him, raw, brutal, and traumatic. But the state would not permit it. War was a glorious thing, as a new fear declared for a new Germany. His left hand pressed against his thigh and as he began to speak, choosing to lie to them, to lull them into a dream of conquest and power that they wanted to believe, at least in his brand new attire. He would look good as he got this over with. Yet, yet within his heart, he seemed to tug at the seams. Children of the Vatalan, I give you war. Prepare for the new Germany. Germany proper has once again been stabilizing the traitors and pretenders destroyed. Now it is time for us to reclaim our rifle Leben's Ram as we did two like, decades ago. Thankfully, it will be somewhat easier this time, with no Soviet Union to contest our mastery of Europe. Only our former subjects exist to oppose us. The Americans and Japanese are half a world away, and once we reassert our control, we're going to be ready for them. Also, except comments from yesterday that I forgot to choose, or, or well, I forgot to address, such as gas, 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 invade all of Africa, have Goring eat Shorner, keep mad, disable mad, and stuff like that, uh, build more military f uh, factories, um, and comments from this from the last video, uh, uh, just for me to you guys, for those who leave like you know a lot of comments, thanks, I appreciate every single video as you can tell by the hearts. Um, keep doing it if you're still watching, thanks. Um, keep it up. Uh, let's see. And I do like the lore stuff that some of you, that some of you guys do write some of the time, so keep it up as well. I like reading that stuff. And uh, what is this? Yeah. And someone did say it's Tuno Naval Warfare time, so we got a lot of stuff to do in this campaign, and hopefully we don't go too kaboomy. So you never know, though. Oh, what happened here? <gasps> oh, they're back. Uh, they never left. Robert Guy say. Wait, this isn't Swiftus Africa. You're not Mueller. You're not Mueller. Nothing there. All right, Central Africa. Alfred Becker. Uh, maybe give it a day. Maybe we'll, things will. Be... What is with that hair? Horst Brunner. All right. Well, we won, my friends. Not bad. Overall, not bad. It does look like maybe our chapters are not technically reinforcing, but we'll have to wait and see. Oh, and we're gonna come back up top. Go ahead and train. Overall, I think we did pretty darn well in Africa. Ooh, did we get one more thing here? Uh... Fighting black market influence. Uh, I guess we could do that one. Yeah. Let's get rid of that. But we've won in Africa, my friends. We've won in Africa. It really wasn't that bad. So. Uh, prepare the new Germany next. One, two, some. Oh, we made some remillies. Yay. Wait. It says we have zero in stockpile. Improved transport planes. Um, that's fine for now. Do we not have... Where are they going, then? I don't like this. We're trying. We're making a lot of transport helicopters. Um, we do it. Whoa! What happened? Why do we have so much to do? Balsham Yega? What happens if we want to increase this to a little bit more? Because we do have twenty-three. I want to get at least forty combat with, or twenty combat for now. Uh, forty is really good. We don't have enough army XP, as you can see. But let's go back. Reset. Balsham Yega. Keep making more. Uh, go high priority as well. The first promotions. The fear cut a striking figure in his ceremony outfit, a field marshal standard with modifications including a small half cape, or yeah, a substantial amount of gold trimming, a veritable wall of metals adorning the breast, and of course his trademark jewel encrusted baton. Goring had not the chance to indulge himself in such a manner since before the Civil War, and this occasion was the perfect opportunity to present this grandeur as a new master of Germany to the people, and more importantly to the military. Normally, the promotion of an officer, or even an exceptional one, was as the case here. Would not call for such pageantry, or at least that would be the state of affairs under Hitler, but Goring was not Hitler, and that was no secret. His passion for opulence and appearance was a critical factor in all that he did, and now was he was free to do as he pleased. Public events
events would become much more frequent and much more grandiose besides. The fear wished to celebrate those officers who had served him so well against the traitors. Hans Spiral called from a roll. August Johannes Steinhoff stepped forward. Spiro's presence was supremely important. These were the officers that were selected to counterbalance Shona's clique, whether for the support of Goring or Spiro did it matter as long as they were not lackeys to the chief of the OKW. The man that had just called up was one of the handpicked, those handpicked by the fear himself. Steinhoff, like himself, had the blood of a pilot through and through, and Goring had already marked him as one to keep close by his side this promotion. Would allow the much deserving man to lead the Luftwaffe to glory as now that Goring was personally above directing its actions. More importantly, it would give Goring a much needed reprieve from the duties of the, the office. The fear smiled as he placed the shoulder straps of a general der Luftwaffe on Steinhoff's uniform and gave him an almost paternal pat on the back as a newly minted general moved to take a seat. Goring would make the Wehrmacht his own, officer by officer. Spado checked Steinhoff's name and moved on to the next one down. Oberst Hans Toysen, step forward. Nice. Fried in the big daddy. Uh, oh, actually, we got more. Oh, yes. Actually, we're importing quite a bit from these guys, so... Let's save our factories, because we will need them later on. Oh, we're going to get some, these guys anyways. Okay. Uh, let's get some tungsten, because we need that too. So. Do we not have more we can take? Because we need, we need, we just need them. Like, our, we need a ton of military production here. You guys are ready to go. You guys are doing okay. Who are you? Why do we have 15 divisions just randomly here? Oh, these are the other divisions we had. Okay, that makes sense then. Um, these two Panzer divisions are not bad, but could be better. Yeah, these guys are now 20 combo with, which is nice. There you go. Um, 25 is unfortunate. Here's what we're going to do. Take the tanks out. Good. And uh, you'll be led by Tozdorf. Yeah, forward one. You want tanks? Two, two, two. Uh, yeah. There we go. Just so that we can get these guys... A little bit more centered on what they have to be with aware at. Because then you guys, you can concentrate on being super fast if you need to. So maybe that's actually for the better. I totally forgot about these guys. Honestly, uh, motorized are not bad. We don't actually have a lot of motorized left. So actually, I'm going to get rid of these guys for now. I think that'll be okay. We need motorized anyways. Infantry is not bad. I don't mind the Marines and Mountaineers. But these Marines are not great. And these Mountaineers are not great either. Uh, you guys definitely have to convert to infantry. I don't even remember which one we, we were trying to use here, man. I'll be honest. Infantry Division 2 is not bad. Ooh. I, I apologize for this. I just I should have been... I should have realized that we had extra guys here. Just make them 40 combo with. Let's do it. Thank you all. If you're infantry, you're going to become 40 combo with. There you go. That's fine. And you three... Oh, God. Just uh, keep them all together. Let's do it. Here. Another army. There you go. Have a good day. I don't really care right now. Just in case. You never know. There we go. I don't want to see this one. Because we already have a good division already made it to go. Uh, Tank-wise, how are we doing? Fighters are not looking great. Oh, God. Infantry equipment. Artillery is really bad. Anti-tank is really bad. But pride in the fear. Hemen Wilhelm Goring, the former president of the Reichstag, former minister, president of Prussia, and above all, the man who, from its birth up to its greatest victories over the Allies and the vanquished Soviets, created the vast Luftwaffe. Now, he is the Fuhrer of the Reich. Now, he is the man who has saved Germany from all their enemies, both within and without, and on Africa. No longer shall the Leipzig Speer dare to corrupt their youth with delusions of freedom. No longer shall the Ilk of Hedges seek to bring the Reich from under the influence of the traitor Himmler. And no longer shall the dude Bowman hope to trap the people in the false bliss of the status quo. Unlike these men, the great hero of the new Germany, lifting it by the dirty hand out of the ashes of a terrible civil war launched by these jealous men. Never again shall Germany be without a hero as mighty, as bold, and as singly minded as the Fuhrer. Therefore, it is declared that each and every building possessed by the government, that each and every structure owned by the public, shall bear his portrait. Though we may not always be with in person. He shall always be with us, watching over us in spirit. The radios and TVs too shall declare what a wondrous leader he is. The problem shall, oh, well, they shall proclaim his victories and speak of his men, who are brave enough to meet the challenge of protecting this new Germany for the people who believe that the best way forward into the future, through the drudgery of time, through the difficulties of war and the decay of peace, is only in the never-ending confidence and the strength of our armies, our fleets and soaring wings, just like in the wars fought so long ago to reclaim the glory lost in the First World War. So shall our future conquests be good for the good for the good of Germany's happiness. Our faith in their dear Fuhrer Goring, just as we have placed faith in Hitler, so shall we give him our deepest and most unshakable faith. Germany forever shall be victorious, and Germany alone shall live on. Germany above all, above all in the world. A five-year industrial plan. The focus will change. Is that... Uh-oh. Militaries panic. Uh-oh. Preparing the army. Uh-oh. Oh, that's not good. I guess we... 
I don't know. I don't even know. Oh, okay. I, I, uh, uh oh, disable war timer. Oh boy. Military. No, uh oh. Do we have a countdown? Our uh, very influence is low. Approval is absolute. Well then. So, time for war. A five-year industrial plan, okay. We may talk to talk about the renewed Germany, but it's time to walk the walk. Our factories lie in ruins, our streets are paved with, our, with ruble and rubble, and our fields are filled with the dead. We must rectify this before any attempt is made to restore control outside the Reich's core. Learning from one's own mistake is good, but learning from our enemies is better. The Soviets had a good idea or two while they were around, and the five-year plan is one of the Fuhrers, uh, and, his, and his economic wisdom has set his sights on. Our industrial plan is still will draw up estimates. How fast can steel production be brought back to pre-war levels? How quickly can roads between supply centers be repaired? How quickly can chemical production be expanded? A deadline makes everyone work harder. I don't know if it's going to be here, but wrangling the Reichstag. Um, well, well, let's see what this one's like. The global oil crisis. Oh, has hit Germany hard. The militaristic faction or administration who have exerted their influence on us for so long are currently in the total disarray. Much of the power they hold has been temporarily stripped thanks to the chaos and upheaval the crisis has caused. The power shorter and its clique wield at the moment is minimal at best. There's no time to waste. Now is the perfect opportunity to put these power-hungry dudes in their place. Goring and his allies currently have enough power to remove their rivals from the administration. There's no time to complete this. Now is the time for action. And to secure the Reich once and for all for fear of Goring. Hmm, interesting. The Goring Yugen. Arthur Axman paused at the door to his fierce study, taking his time to wipe any small specks of dust and dirt away from his uniform before straightening in it with almost robotic motions. Satisfied with his appearance, the aging former head of the Hitler Jungen pushed open the door and strode into the room. Clicking his heels together with a surprising energy, he gave the familiar salute that now came with a twist, Hal Goring. The old hawk seemed bemused by his subordinate's clear attempts at flattery. Minister Axman, it's very good to see you. How has your new position been treating you? Axman cleared his throat, making sure to consider his response, lest he upset the most powerful man in Europe. Oh, on the whole, I must say I quite enjoy the role, but more than that, mine fear, I am eternally grateful and humbled by the trust you have placed in me as your foreign secretary. Good, that's very good to hear. Axman detected the hint of something in his leader's voice, but what it was eluded him. Some new plans, no doubt, but Goring was hardly capable of keeping secrets for long, as if he had heard the minister's innermost thoughts. Goring's next remarks revealed that he, what had been on his mind. You know, Otto, I've been working a new project with Herr Mockel at HJ headquarters. A fine organization, indeed, but then again, I hardly need to tell you that of all people. Tell you that, of all people. Axman chuckled politely, wondering where this was headed. Well, anyhow, Goring picked up his place again. The HJ was all very well and good, but it was made to serve Adolf, you understand. Well, Adolf is gone, and now I'm the leader of the Reich. Do you understand? Axman realized at once what it meant, and nodded vigorously. Goring smiled, broad and excellent. I have all the papers and orders prepared, but I would not dream of having the dedication ceremony for my Goring Union. Or, yeah, oh... Goring Yugen with anyone but yourself, Arthur, and why you would be in charge of it were you not already engaged, but no matter, I offer to you the role of Reichsfuhrer Goring Yugen. A ceremonial title, but incredibly prestigious. Take a seat and I'll tell you all about it. The personality court begins anew, and my apologies about that. I'm, just, I'm, I'm more used to reading like Hitler Yugen, so Goring Yugen is just, it just sounds really weird to me, but hey. And we get exactly 13% more stability. Interesting. 100% stability. We love it. Our ring of power. Goring carefully placed or handed his nephew's ring, carefully depositing it, it into the palm of the man's hand. Heinrich studied it with intense fascination, boring and all. The Fuhrer seemed and smiled boyishly with delight. Now this one, Heinrich, was made by Herr Zeitner when I became Reichsmarshal. See the insignia on the inside? Or on the side. Heinrich smiled and nodded, and rapture with the spectacle of the object. Had it been anyone else, Heinrich thought silently he would have haggled for it right then and there, but his uncle would have never been part with a symbol of his power and success, not even for all the gold of the Swiss. Apparently Heinrich was not as unreadable as he had hoped, because his uncle seemed to have understood his inner thoughts. Ah, it is a marvel, isn't it? Of course, you could always have one for yourself if you wanted it. Er, but uncle, I'm not a Reichsmarshal. Heinrich... You're a Goring, and I take care of my family. I'm sure I can find something for you to manage. Give me some time, and I'll get you a good position. Something nice and quiet, but hopefully not too boring. Besides, I may need you to take on some important responsibility soon, and this ought to be a good experience for you. A little nepotism never hurt anybody, right? We lose some command power, stupidity, and political power, but Heinz Theodor Goring becomes a general. I don't know anything about him. Wait, what does he look like? Heinz? Um... Oh, there's Steinhoff. Steinhoff. Oh, you might have seen better days, man. Um, von Bayer, Bayer, Becker, ha Hirschfeld, Hans. They always had these nice glasses. Funny glasses. Wow, Hans, you're right there, man. Oh, boy. 
<laughs> He's really bad and everything, but hey, just nepotism, that, right? Also, we're doing the five-year industrial plan, which popped up after we did this one, so. Didn't read, read about Ringling in the Reichstag. Yeah, but the five-year industrial plan. Oh, this one. This five-year plan. Just as before the war, Goring is once again in charge of the economy of the Reich. Back then, Germany was forged from the chaos of the Weimar Republic into a power, whom would re-establish itself as a proper ruler of Europe. Now, the Führer shall once again shape a Germany devastated by the Civil War back into its proper position. It is time to set up a new five-year plan. As for the details of the plan, there are a few important questions that have to be determined eventually, such as slaves or foreign workers, debt reduction and austerity, or new financial policies versus the strength of the flesh. Sure, the Führer will make the correct choice. So we get two more civvies. And we get the German economy and our national debt will rise sharply. We're from the financial sector. The GDP growth will decrease by a lot. Oh god. Debt will go up. Oh boy, refreshing new idea. Oh, we still have Germany in ruins, which is really bad. Uh, a march to MEFO. Uh, they unlock the MEFO bill system. A system to increase GDP together with inflation, which will cause a decrease in GDP growth for some political capital every month. But if we do not properly handle the bills, it will be heck to pay. Oh crap. Repurpose civilian factories. Remove two cities, add two millies. Oh crap. Increase the loyalty. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, we actually remove infrastructure. Destroy treacherous architecture. Excess slave nationalization. Utilize foreign labor. Water down the wine. Repurpose personal slaves. Oh my gosh. This does not seem very good. I guess we'll repurpose civilian factories? Oh, I don't like that. Shona and his supporters brought forward a proposal to convert various underused factories that are until now producing consumer goods into heavy industry arms factories, as always, for the good of the Reich and to ensure that the Wehrmacht has the strength it needs, of course. Now, implementing this would uh, <clears throat> obviously reduce the capacity in the civilian industry as well as an economic cost needed for conversion. But we need to Shona or to keep Shona's clique happy for now, or the consequences might be consequential. So we might just grant them this. After all, who needs plowshares when he can use swords to get the grain? The new Reichsmarsch, so Heinrich Theodor Goring, attempted to study the faces of the officers in attendance for his formal promotion ceremony. There was Shona, his face harsh, his lips held in a line so thin and straight it might have come from a surgeon's scalpel. He was never good at interpreting the emotions of the ruthless commander, save for when he was furious, but it seemed plain he was not enjoying the event. A few empty seats will say away sat Spidel, who at least lacked his rival's unnerving countenance. Still, even if he wasn't as utterly humorless as a butchery, that he didn't seem at all that particularly happy either. But so what? They weren't the fear. They weren't in charge and they weren't being promoted. Let them soak, Goring thought to himself as he watched his uncle ascend to the dais, where he had presided as president under the late Hitler. He would show them that he too could lead armies across Europe and beyond, what they could do but sit and watch, surely. They might play tough in Kings of the Hill at the end of the day, it was his uncle whose word was law of the land, and it was Heinrich who could sway his uncle. He tried not to let a smile show as his uncle invited him to stand beside him, to bask in the glory of the occasion as the assembled delegates of the party cheered and cheered. He couldn't be sure that he had been successful, but it hardly mattered. The Führer carefully christened Heinrich's finger with a ring just like his own, officially crowning his nephew as the first Reichsmarschall des Militarischen Transports. A new actor enters. Stage right. Wow. I don't know. I don't think I like what was going on here. Destroy church's architecture? Well, so be it. Though, though the likes of Speer, Hedrich, and other traitors have fled the Reich, their legacy remains, be it Oldensburg or the SS, statues, monuments, and housing of Speerian design, or even remnants of the Weimar era. This traitor's architecture only wastes valuable building materials that could be used elsewhere. Meanwhile, much of the Reich's building substance is still in ruins, and so are our finances. The solution is obvious. It is time to dismantle these stains upon the landscape and use them to construct for what really matters to the German future. Barracks, arms factories, and research labs, of course. If you're going, she'll oversee the process. After all, Karen Hall could use some new marble as well. Oh god, I don't know. Showing our best side. Ooh, ooh. New German Industries. I kind of like that. Tax them all. But we need to do uh, both of these two. Yeah. Exploitate the taxation. Wow. Work the banks. Oh my goodness. Work the blood. I kind of don't mind doing the blood. I kind of want to do the blood one. I'll be honest, man. Showing the best side. But let's reform the financial sector first. There are dead ends and bottomless holes in a financial sector, in both the public and private spheres of managing money. It seems that what the treacherous SS and the traitors spirits exploited lay before lay open to us. These imperfections in our budget shall be put to great use. For the restoration of our great country, we will do anything with these loopholes, so long as nobody questions us. We will satisfy the needs of the Vaterland in the shadows. And democracy returns to Italy. Oh boy, that should make it easier to kill them off, right? Ooh, yes. More divisions. Yeah, I don't think they're getting more helicopters. Yeah, they're definitely not. So stop training them then. Ah, good. Oh, good. Good, more range. It's nice. We can wait for that stuff. It is 65, so let's keep making... Oh, no, we already have this stuff done. Nice. Let's give this one then. How's this looking? Oh. 
How do we lower growth when it's already so low? By going in the negative. Oh boy, I am I'm looking forward to this, but part of me also is not. <laughs> oh no. Our GDP growth will decrease. Oh god, no. That's not a lot of money, I'll be honest. That's not a lot of money. And finally, cash. Loans are always useful, and in times like this, our fatherland must have loans. Such things we can get from the banks. From within a country and beyond its borders, our government can obtain quick cash. And such cash shall be spent on the recovery of the Vatalan. And we can keep on doing this far and wide until our country is fully back on its feet. Our Vatalan will not need to worry about paying back these loans. We They don't need to be repaid. It's enough that our Vatalan is whole again. Hmm. How low can we go? Okay. Oh, wait. Is that a bug? They said our GDP growth will go lower. It rose by 2%. Right, there's no minus there, right? I, I don't see a minus there, right? Okay, I guess we'll cut the excess then. If anyone has too much, they can always remove what weighs them down. In the cause of our new vat of our vata land, we have too many places and too many people to support. Our government cannot handle the strain of such weight. Therefore, the camps that are too big shall be shut down. The workers of the Reich shall have to be laid off if they are serving in places that need to be cut getting down their expenses, and our offices will have to be filled with more workers, no matter how cramped they get. Everywhere, our Vatalan must see the excess removed from its back. In times like these, we cannot afford to carry more than what, what we really, truly need. Alright, not bad so far. Refreshing new idea. I like that. I don't like this one, though. But let's do a refreshing new idea. Exploding your people's faith in us works wonders. We must keep doing this. We must produce new ideas for milking more cash out of them. No matter how they may doubt us in secret, it is vital to the Vatalan's recovery that we deceive them. Even if they must be blindfolded, the Vatalan's glory is greater than our duty to speak the truth to our people. In the end, they will not care. They will instead enjoy the fruits of their deceit. That'll help us with consumer goods, which is very, very good. It's good for leadership. Okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It is 65. We gotta make sure we got we got the best stuff possible, so we gotta keep going on this way. Max planning. I like that. Even more max planning and reinforce rate is pretty good. Even the last consumer good uh, plus supply consumption is pretty good. But getting more organization is going to be important, especially for infantry and getting more soft attack. That'd be really good. Yeah, this goes for everybody. More defense and recovery rate. Now, as much as I want to do this, we can throw in logistic companies on our tanks and such. So we should be okay with that. I like the planning, but organization for me is just a little bit more important for now. I could be completely wrong though. Uh, we didn't have four billion there, did we? That went up. All right, so now I I I, I probably honestly I want to ask you guys which way we should go, whether we work the blood, or showing a side, or you know work the banks. Um, I think I want to go with the slaves, right? Because foreign labor, I don't know. Foreign labor is okay. We do. I prefer using slaves. I mean, so I don't know. I don't know which way is better. But I do want to do excess slave nationalization. So if you want to read utilize foreign labor, please go right ahead. But work for freedom. But excessive slave nationalization. Our people have too many slaves under the control. Their households enjoy the fruits of the labor of slaves more than our state could enjoy. Therefore, it's important for us to change the way things are for our people and their slaves. We shall start confiscating slaves from families who possess more than they need. We shall set up a limit to the number of slaves each family can use, compensating them for every slave they have to give up. And to make good use of these thralls, we shall place them in camps for use in every corner of the Vatalan. That way, the surplus of labor provided to us by these shall not spoil. Um, as much as I want to cut spending, we need to keep boosting it up so we can get some more oppo for anti-tank, more artillery, like, we are, we're, the age of me cutting things down in this campaign is over. Like, I refuse to cut things down, maybe except for us as, like, you know, for the debt. Oh, oh, as much as I want to build that up, we're going to keep making some, uh, nillies as well. Uh, 80% is pretty good. Um, 60% is okay. 70% is not bad. 80% over there, 80%. I think we'll make a city for every two nillies, so... Because eventually we can convert our uh, millies over to, or civvies over to, so. We'll see what happens. So, and then new boom, boom. Boom. And actually, we're going to throw in a dockyard as well, because actually right now we could really use another dockyard. Yeah. Actually, we're... Can we not make synthetic? Oh, there it is. Uh, why is it not blue? It should be. It should really be blue. Um, We could really use more ships. Honestly, let's do that one instead. There you go. We'll see how... Uh, there comes a point in the campaign where we're just making a lot of stuff, so... But we're definitely not near there yet. I don't know, like, this is this seems really glitched. Like, the only way we can actually throw stuff into, into uh, 
reinforcing our transports, it's just by making new ones. Which is a glitch in the game, so which I hate, but <clears throat> we're going to be working a lot of blood here, my friends. Just because, I don't know, foreign workers doesn't seem really right to me. Water down the wine, if you want to be about that, please go ahead. It's just, I don't know. I don't want to use Gost Arbeiter, as some might say. But repurpose personal slaves. Ooh. Total exploitation of the flesh. Yes! Germany needs every hand at work so it may be rebuilt. So it is important for us to put the slaves we still have to work. We will still need our own people for the rebuilding, but make greater use of these slaves is less costly than asking so much of our own. <clears throat> Longer hours, more tasks, greater motivation shall allow the slaves to do what needs to be done to end Germany's recovery pains as soon as possible. And if they refuse to do more for Vaterland, we can make them pay productively. Should we lose any slave, we shall find two to replace that, and we will keep on doing more with these human tools of labor until Germany is strong again. Ireland is moving away from the pact. It seems that the inhabitants of the Emerald Isle are suffering from a clear lack of judgment. Maybe the current economic crisis makes them incapable of making rational decisions, or those cheap drinks they consume are producing a collective delusion. Whatever the case, the Oireachtas has voted the Pact Observer Bill to change the status of Ireland inside the Pact from Budenspartner to a Pact Observer. Despite Dublin assuring us that they are not planning to withdraw from our alliance, they can't fool anyone with their lies. It is clear as day that they are aiming to move away from our orbit. This blatant attempt at defection in front of our own faces is even more insulting considering they pretend to have all the economic benefits of being under wing without any of the commitments to keep Europe at peace. We need to let the Irish know that there will be consequences of this reckless action and that approaching the off-end will result in drastic responses. The Irish really aren't getting it, are they? No, they're not. And keep zooming out to see if there's any other focuses. Uh, repossess personal slaves. I don't want to do that one. Even more austerity. Ooh, Germany ruins. Our growth will go even further down. Dockyards would decrease... Our dockyard production would decrease with 25% for three years. Ah, we need dockyards. We really do. 25% penalty is not bad. More austerity. I don't want to hurt our GDP stuff anymore, but getting that extra stuff is not bad. New German industries, though. Ooh, we do get four more civvies and another milli. Repossess personal slaves. Alvatalin has the right to ask everything of the people, especially in times of great need. Repossessing the slaves of, of every family in Germany shall be for their great need. For too many of our good citizens use them for reasons both small and too great. Too many for their own good and too few for the good of the state. Every slave, no matter how they are treated by their masters, shall be placed in accounts all over the Vatalin. And for the Vatalin, their labor shall go. For the Vatalin, they will live until they can no longer work. Our people do not need to own slaves. Our state needs those slaves. One, two... Oh, we're actually working on four. Okay, that's pretty good. Dockyards, Millie, Civi... Roads, because I do uh, just finish up the roads there. That's fine with me. I don't care. Oh no, it's you guys. No, it's you guys. Yeah, no, it's you guys. That's good. Look at that. They're they're not reinforcing, which I don't know why that happens in the game. I really don't understand why. Oh, hey, that's good. That's good though. Little ahead of time. That's fine. Get more output. Twelve percent super necessary. What do we have here? Two point one percent. Not bad. Um, I don't want to do that one. Increased GDP, lower GDP growth. There will be heck to pay. I don't want to do that. I do want to tax them all, though, but I don't want her output or political power. Ooh. Even more austerity. So you can get it down to there. So what do we need to work the blood? Just need one of the following. So we can get new German, new German industries. I don't want her to growth. Uh, if you want to rebel about that, please go right ahead. I think we'll defund the Kriegsmarine. Because we we'll, to make up for the deficit, we will make more dockyards. And we need more dockyards... To make a bigger navy. And we're going to need that navy. So we're going to hurt the Kriegsmarine. But in replace of that. 25% debuff. We'll make a good number of dockyards to counteract that. On the warpath or not. War is expensive. And so we must prioritize. Shona won't allow the Hale's funding to be touched. And the Fuhrer will surely not turn against his beloved Luftwaffe. Hence. It is our bloated navy for whom a cut is due. By changing priorities for raw materials. Delaying construction and assignment of workers to the dockyards. As well as shelving upgrading plans. We can save a lot of money. At least in the short term. Some journals may question to cut funding at all. But if necessary. We can always point to the fact that. that between Speer, Bowman, and Dunant. The Kriegsmarine mostly supported our opponents anyway. So there are some admirals and sailors among his supporters. But they will likely be less than pleased. From the home front. The air scream of the sounds of the machinery is production lined upon a production line upon a production line produces weapons of conquest and death. John or Jan hadn't heard the Dresden factory shriek out this much for almost a decade now. Even during the Civil War, the factory had been quieter. What that meant for the future with the slave shuddered to imagine. He'd been seen and seen the horrors of war firsthand, as his beloved Poland was crushed under the Nazi boot all those years ago. No one deserved such a fate. The conveyor belt sold half mold 
sent more half a simple grenade his way, waiting for the final assembly. It was then that the idea came to him. It was a foolish brazen idea, but John had always been a daredevil in his youth. It was the memories of those days in the streets of Lublin. Lublin, getting into mischief with tinkering with the watches in his father's shop that drove him forward. A modification here, an adjustment there, and the grenades would detonate much sooner. With any luck, they'd take whatever Nazi do was throwing them to heck. They had made the factories to be efficiently as possible, producing as much material as they could ring out through slave labor. For the first time since he was being sent to the darn place, John was happy about that fact. He was producing the defective explosives at a truly prodigious rate. Even the foreman seemed impressed, granting him an extra hour of rest for his efforts. John almost laughed out loud, but kept his composure and facade of submission. John had long ago abandoned his faith, but he prayed to God now for the nations of the world. He prayed his contribution to the defense would be felt if one's life saved was all he asked for. A just punishment, of course, waits for him. Oh, and a little bit of lag, and oh, WRF, I guess we'll have to fight them. Ooh, that's not good. They're actually pretty strong. They get a lot of manpower on that side of Russia. But follow it up with New German Industries, because I do want to get to here, and I don't want her GDP growth too much. I don't mind more debt. Debt is fine. Oh, actually, debt is not fine. I hate debt, but it's better than GDP de growth decrease. At last, we have a surplus of cash reserves, and at last, the Vatalan can make use of these. Upon factories, we shall spend the money. Upon new workshops and new production centers, we shall use the treasure of the Vatalan has struggled for. And with these great places of labor put in place, our people can invest in them, work in them, and take pride in them. The restoration of our national pride and the recovery of our nation shall depend on every product and service that comes out of these newborn industries. With these, our Vatalan can prosper once again. And I'm going to work the blood. If you want to read about tax them all, please go right ahead. I um, mean, actually, you know what? I'm going to probably do it anyways. Work the banks. Well, obviously, we can't do that one, but work the blood. Yeah. Every sweat, every drop of blood, every tear that must be used up, every hand and every mind and heart and soul must be occupied with the duty of restoring the Vaterland. From the ashes of war, all people, German and not, shall go through every trial necessary to rise up to the heavens. No matter how long it may take us, no matter how hard it may be on us, no matter how painful it may be to our bodies, we will all work to make our Vaterland great once again. One, two, three. Good. The, those roads are done. Making more millies. Making more millies. Oh, we have half a million. Half a billion. That's nice. Work the blood. Cool. Oh, 3.1%. That's actually pretty good. That's actually pretty darn good. One, two, three, four, and even more millies. Because, my God, we are... What happened to our, our millies? Keep working on that artillery and everything there. Uh, are these going to anything here? You know, just in case. Do we have a deficit or... Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure I, we have to use these realistically. We really do. But, oh, God. Mm. We're pretty good there. Marines, special forces, yeah. Um, oh, they're going to take a lot of... Oh, my gosh. 3,100 needed. Jesus. Go with, like, 3, 5. Go 5 for now. 5 is fine for now. I just don't understand why the game is glitched out of that... Why can't the transport helicopters just work? Work the blood. Oh, we can work for freedom, too. Oh, yeah. We have several prisoners of war in our fatherland. They are useless in the camps. It is necessary for us to put them to work. As former enemies of the Reich, they can redeem themselves through hard labor. We shall put them to use everywhere they are needed. With this new pool of workers, we do not need to worry about slave revolt or complaints from our citizens. And the Reich would always appreciate the fruits of labor of anyone within it. And if they wish to ask us what their work would do for them, we may tell them this. Arbeit macht frei. Cool, so one, two, three, four. F almost five. That's really nice. Keep making those millies, boys and girls. Mm, if you need a train, go right ahead. Oh, you guys are done. You guys are done probably too. And how about you guys? You guys are all done. Nice. Um, obviously, these guys don't have enough arty. They're only 20 combo with probably. Oh, they're only 18. That's really bad. No wonder we have a massive deficit so, uh, of some of these guys. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, they're looking okay. They had to do militarize, huh? We did make a ship. We made a carrier, though. That's good. Um, as much as I actually don't really care for carriers anymore, um, that's still good to have. That that helps cover our forces, especially in open waters, especially against American Navy. I hope to God we can do okay against American Navy. All right, so we did that one. Oh, they prepare the army. Honestly, I know I'm taking a while to do this. I don't think I want to do this until we're really ready, right? Like we want to be ready, cause once it starts, it's 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 just going to keep going. It's just it's not going to end. <sighs> is this worth doing? I don't know if this is worth doing or not. I want to tax them all. Let me know. Should I do march to MEFO? Please let me know in the comments below. I will, I'll I'll, I'll read all your comments and seeing whether we should do it or not. Cause if we do, then we can do tax them all. We get more money, but it's only five percent more. It's not really worth it in my opinion. But 
Because that doesn't matter. But I think War Plan Zero, I think we'll do prepare the army. The Vemak was shattered in the Belga Creek, split to the four and set up against itself. While we may have gained the greatest share, more than half of our officers cannot be trusted, and who knows how many enlisted men. A pruning down is required for this stone. The war proved our tactics outdated and our hair old fashioned. It must be reformed if we are to reassert our control over Europe, so that we may crush our enemies, see them driven before us, and hear the lamentations of their women. A new age of science would be good as well to do. I don't know if we can do it afterwards, but let's do that one too. Never before have our generals had such high, such an influence of policy. They did win us the war, after all, naturally. They expect their opinions to be heard, and lately they've been clamoring for more funding. A few of them that have more imaginative of them have been digging up old ideas. Ideas discarded as impractical and unfeasible, and too dangerous to sanction. These ideas may not lead anywhere, but it doesn't do any harm to let them dream. Send some funds down to, the, to our research departments and entertain them. Okay, oh, sh bad words. Bad, bad words. I guess finish off the SS. The remains of the SS will be hunted down with extreme prejudice. Yes! Yay, I like that. Beginning as a mere personal god of the Fuhrer, the SS has developed into a malevolent uh, tumor that Germany can no longer tolerate. These previous comrades in arms have been reduced to pathetic lackeys for Himmler, so the time has come to bring an end for the poisonous organizations, which has done us so much harm. With our forces in a strong position, we will bring the SS to its end in a swift and dramatic manner. Thousands of men. SS men across the Reich shall be shot or imprisoned on the Führer's orders, snuffing out the Black Sun so Germany can finally see light. It seems like we should be able to go to war and do all this stuff at the same time. Uh, but I'm just... I'm just... Oh. Okay. Okay. So if not completed within 160 days, we could could probably. Ooh. The military's mechanic has been disabled, or a completed war plan zero. Well, shnikes. So we gotta do all that stuff before then. Uh, oh. Hello. An age of science. New sweeping R&D programs. Oh, I like that one. That seems pretty good. Seven days. Academic base gets worse. Way less research speed and more political power eventually. Um, Volkswissenschaft. I like that. Militaire Wissenschaft. Limited opportunity to get the military and Kriegsmarine involved in the project. This opportunity goes away once the focus ends. Weapons of the Third Weltkrieg. Holy crap. Bigger, stronger, better panzers. I knew a motor. Halter, Panzerung? Are we missing something? Das Liger. The Sun Gun. Jesus Christ, that sounds awesome, Master of Light. There's so much here, holy crap. Loot the castles. I mean, I, uh, for this one, we just have to have it completed before this does bad for us. So, I don't know how, I don't know, like, if we do it, then complete it. Do we still have the same countdown, or do we not have the same countdown? I assume we don't have the same countdown, so it would be different. I want to get through these three first, at least, but... All current and former members of the SS will be stripped of the military honors for their betrayal. The SS love to parade their little medals of crap on their chest so that people will believe them to be heroes. However, the truth is that they are all cowards mopping the floor for the lunatic in Burgundy. The SS does not deserve these medals, as they have never shown any sort of honor, bravery, or even strength of any kind. The SS does not deserve any of these medals, and these medals will be much better served at being melted down into bullets or spoons for respectable veterans to eat from. This just... Uh, I can already tell this campaign is going to be me making me rip my hair out. Probably not as much as Gang of Four Spare. Um, at least early on. Like, early on, that is... That was difficult, like getting enough regime stability, but. Oof. Alright, so we got that one done. These are only three weeks, right? And we have, what, 92 days? So we got some time, right? I hope so, but Luther Castles. There was a virus that was infecting Germany since the rise of Adolf Hitler. That being the thuggish SS led by the insane overlord Heinrich Himmler. The time will come when we put an end to this mad experiment in Burgundy, but that requires long months and years of planning before we can actually do that safely. For now, though, any vestiges of the SS in Germany will be firmly and justly wiped out. We will start by tearing down the bizarre castles that are plastered all across Germany. We might expect there to be some traps or some SS officers hiding it here and there, but we will go in and come out with as many goods that the SS has been hoarding in their places. And actually, since we're here, how long is this going to take to do? Seven days, that's okay. The Purple Scare. Oh, scare. Goring's smile spread wide over his face as he looked down upon the crowd that chanted his name. There are no longer any bombers to worry about, nor fighters that would strafe buildings or tank shells, bullets, or whatever else enemy forces could muster. Instead, there was a strange sensation of peace, broken strong and fast by the entrance of the new Fuhrer. Looking over the disheveled and lost people, Goring knew they needed something to hate, and he would give it to them. Sons and daughters of the great uh, Germanic Reich, he began, sweeping an arm across and catching the interest of all present. Now that this war is concluded, we may return to peace, as brief and fleeting of ascent as it may be. However, not one of you shall be fooled into thinking that this peace is nothing more than an excuse for the enemies of the Reich to gather in secrecy and organize resistance against us. The illegitimate heirs of Adolf Hitler have been cast in a shadow, but another insidious organization remains. Slamming his fist on the podium in front of him, he leaned forward and felt a rush of excitement flow through him, and he let his lips part for a grin. 
The Black Sea of Europe, the rogue breakaway of Burgundy, has nothing more than a mortal enemy in all of its constituents, including the Schutzstaffel, our traitors, enemies, and bloodthirsty dogs howling towards insanity. A spark of awe amongst the crowd that spread rapidly, a sense of brewing hatred. Goring had led them like a sheep, as of today all former members of the SS shall be questioned, all who serve shall be trialed, and all elements of the SS are to be destroyed, burned and shattered, hailed to the new Germany, and drumheads across Germany. The Civil War has been won, our economy has been served or saved by our great leader, and now we look out into the world and prepare for the greatest conquest in history. Our great conquest will put those of Napoleon, Hitler, and Alexander the Great to shame. The Nazi banner will wave in the heat of Iberia, the winds of Rome, and the reign of Washington, D.C. It will flutter as the cherry blossoms do in Tokyo. The people must know of our coming glory, and despite the hardships of the Civil War, the civilians must know the greatness upon the horizon. We will realize the goals of Hitler, and our greatness will be projected from the rising sun of the east and the setting sun of the west. Fuel Directive 353. One, in the light of the continuous treason against the Reich, all non loyal personnel of the Allgemein SS, Waffen SS, RSHA, SS Sonderkommando, SS Medical Corps, Ananerba, SS Frauenkorps, Auxiliary SS, as well as the SS Foreign Legions shall be stripped of their military and financial honor. Hereafter, non loyal are defined as those who refuse to join the rightful successor to Adolf Hitler in their battle against a treasonous force, thus prolonging the suffering of the German people in a brother war. 3. All non loyal former personnel of the former above organizations, both alive and deceased, shall likewise be stripped of all honors. Four exceptions to the above can only be made at the Führer's discretion sign, Führer of the German Reich, him and Wilhelm Goring. No loyalty means no honor. And I want to finish this one out with uh, the Germanian Triumphant. Do that one and they'll do Warplan Zero. There was something incredible about the triumphs of the Roman era that truly speaks to the German nation. Shows of one's strength and devotion to the battle line were things which united the entire nation in one giant parade towards valor and nationalism. With the ashes of the Civil War fading, we should give one of our most loyal and faithful generals a triumph of his very own. That man, of course, is Ferdinand Schorner. A loyal soldier and honorable, trustworthy man since the times of World War II. He truly deserves the triumphs as those Julius Caesar had, and he has also been pushing for this for a long time, as he puts it. We should wrap the entirety of Germany into a cult, the cult of valor. The castles burn. Kurosinse, Kurosinse, Vogelsang, Sonthofen, the bomber pilot Leopold muttered under his breath, looking over a map with several targets across Germany marked. The rest of his skeleton crew worked in the background, getting ready to pilot the plane for the fourth time this weekend, their target being Ordensburg Marienburg. Leopold simply sighed as he trailed a finger off from a marked building to marked building, as ruthless as they were exterminating what was left of the Schutzstaffel's legacy. Leopold held no sympathy for them. Ordensburg Marienburg, at this point, was nothing but cinders and rubble, and yet still him and his crew were asked to bomb it a fourth time, a fifth time even. An amused smile came over him as he backed away from the map and turned around, mental images forming in his head of how he had flown over Marienburg for the first time, and one of his comrades informed him that there were piles of loot to be found in it. Gold, relics, jewels, art, everything stolen from Germany itself, to whatever poor minority found itself at the hands of the SS, and everything carted back to these places, now being carted out to be repurposed back to the German people, and with some not-so-subtle rumors floating around that most of it would go to a certain pompous fur. Or fewer. With a grin, Leopold stretched his arms above his head and then snapped his fingers and cracked the air open with a loud whistle and catching the rest of his crew's attention. Carrying some boxes, some polished up the plane. With an elated tone befitting a bomber serving the Reich proudly, he spoke. Let's start another firestorm in Marienburg and leave the fifth round to the ruts. I don't want to do the science stuff, man. Perfection. Oh, I want to do this one. Vox Grenadiers. That'd be so nice. Let's search in the Army's Grandeur. Grenadiers. Review the fleet. Oh, gut the hulks. Carrier. Oh, that's not bad. Modern as a fleet. Um, ship experience gain. Honestly, research technology speed. I kind of like thinking no such thing as obsolete, just because this is much better for ship experience gain. Because this one goes away eventually. Recycle the steel. Eh, not really worth it. A pride of the Reich would be nice. The Luftwaffe. Oh God, yes. Oh, we could use paratroopers too. I didn't even make any yet. Can we? Ooh, but that moves. Ooh, I'm Falschmeier. They can't be pair drop, which makes sense. But these guys move fast. I can just get a beach at wherever. Oh, we have some. There you go. Cool. And then uh, we're playing zero. Denmark, Austin, the Netherlands, Bohemia, Poland, and Slovakia. Every journey begins with the first step, and the path to restore the Reich's glory lies in securing its immediate and rightful sphere in Central Europe. These operations have been given the name Warplan Zero. Resistance is expected to be futile and minuscule. Denmark, Austin, the Netherlands, Bohemia, Polakia, Slovakia. Yeah, cool. Ah, dimming the black sun. Good morning, citizens of the Greater German Monarch Reich. This is Reich Center Germania, with both the blessing and the permission from Fuhrer Goring. We have been allowed to broadcast the results of the trials against the black state known as the Schutzstaffel that has been plaguing Germany. With the united effort of the Wehrmacht, Ordnung's Polizei, and all of the Reich's legal institutions, a vast structures containing thousands of supporters of Heinrich Himmler, Reinhard Heydrich, and other associated high rank SS members, one Schaffer, Schorsch, 
Uh, Shorsh Alexander has admitted to taking extensive funding from the Organization of Free Nations funneled throughout the territory of Bahamasa. Others reports admit to having ties with the radical Zionist organization known as Ergun, as well as contacted with Japanese agents located in Brittany. In light of these discoveries, the judge Ernst Lautz proclaimed in his final statement, one death is not enough for these men. For their treason and destruction against the Reich, they should die 1,000 times, with, with 15,000 death sentences, uh, sentences just thus declared and carried out via hanging. The Reich has made it safe, made a safer place for all of us, but the fear himself and his generosity he has also declared that all former Shustafel possessions shall be converted for service to the Reich. It is the hope that eventually all traces of the SS will henceforth be obliterated, once and for all, separating National Socialism from the plans of the rogue state known as Burgundy. And for the news, one uh, Octo Gunsch. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And we're going to conclude going ahead with Warplan Zero. But I might just read one more thing here since we're here. Anyways, strategic defense is not bad. Um, I don't want to pay attention to how much loyalty they have, but I know I'm going to need to. Wait. Württemberg, Hohenzollern, and Moseland add 12 land forts on the old French border. What? Ooh, nuclear stockpile begins to develop. Ooh, I... Ooh, I kind of like that. The earlier we get that, the better. Just in case we need to nuke him a little harder. Baron's children. Oh, God, I want to do all this stuff. Oh, my goodness. Pens uh, Grenadier operations. Armor soft attack will go up. Citizenship through service. Ooh. Mobile support weapons. Ooh. Legacy of the Ghost Division. Ooh. Let me know what should we do. Should we do mobile support weapons versus Legacy of the Ghost Division? Panzer Grenadier operations versus citizenship through service. As well as, what is your take? Should we do Gut the Hulks? Or should we do Modernize the Fleet? Mass conversion of aircraft carriers, of course, versus no such thing as obsolete. And, of course, we recycle the steel and Atlantic veterans. But I do apologize that we aren't able to get to conquering just yet. We'll get there at the beginning of the next episode. But, guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. It does help me out. Uh, check out my Discord link in the description below. Leave a comment, too, because, heck, why not? And it's almost 1966, but I'll see you tomorrow when we will begin the mass conquest of the rest of Europe and maybe even beyond. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a tremendous, tremendous, goring, fat man rest of your day.